So Laura Shin just had a groundbreaking interview with Doquan. Now, to me, what makes this groundbreaking is I feel like this is the first unbiased interview we've had of Doquan since the Terra Luna collapse. Um, I think the interview he did, I forget the name of the, the news article, but I, I feel like there was more structure there and maybe some coached questions. I don't know for sure. And I'm, again, it's just speculation. It's just how it felt to me. Um, but I, I know Laura Shin's podcast. I know that she um, is very unbiased, I guess, in these approaches. She does a very good job at looking at things um, just from a totally factual basis okay and so her questions are not going she's not going to not ask a question because she's afraid to hurt doquan's feelings or wants to portray him a certain way i guess is what i'm trying to say um and i feel like she did a really good job in this interview asking him the hard questions um now he didn't always respond to them as we would expect but just to hear her ask the question and just kind of see how doquan responds uh is I think a very telling, you know, to me at least. Like, I think there's a lot you can derive from that, even if he doesn't answer the question directly. Now, this podcast, again, it's Unchained. If you guys haven't checked out her podcast, go go take a look. She does a very good job. There's lots of great content on there. Um, and again, this one was particularly spicy because uh, after the interview, there was a lot of stuff that broke out on Twitter, a lot of people claiming that... Um, she was like protecting Doquan and all this stuff, which is which is crazy. And I think it's important to note that I had no exposure to Terra Luna. Okay, so I was not involved in that at all. I didn't hold any. Um, so I'm really just looking at this from the outside in. Um, and and you know, again, I had no position myself. This is purely just my observations. Um, and I gotta say. I was really disappointed when it came to Do Kwan apologizing. I feel like he has a big problem showing empathy. And I think that's been the biggest problem for Do Kwan this far. I think that's why we still are talking about Terra Luna. I think had he come out, apologized to everybody, um, and then just kind of done his own thing, for the most part, people would have forgot about it not forgot like they would have obviously been upset a lot of people lost a lot of money you can't expect them to be happy but it wouldn't still be as big of a talking point as it is now i think the reason why we are still talking about it as much as we are is because doquan is constantly shitposting people on twitter um, and he's also defending himself in a lot of ways that i don't feel like he should whether he thinks the comment is right or wrong, he should just ignore it. He should just move on and stay away from it for now. Let the attorneys and everyone legally handle things. Um, but he should stay out of it personally because I think that is a big problem. I think that's, again, why we're still talking about it. Now, a couple things that I wanted to note um, about that interview with Do Kwan that I thought was was pretty telling is... For one, there's there's a couple things, okay? So supposedly Doquan was added to the red red list for the uh, the Interpol. What that basically means is that he's wanted by the Interpol. Um, we haven't been able to find any evidence of that. Laura Shin talks about how she contacted or reached out to uh, the Interpol multiple times and hadn't heard anything back from them. So that's kind of besides the point to me. Um, it's definitely clear that South Korea wants Do Kwan, though. Um, there's lots of evidence, uh, and there's um, a, a PDF, basically, that they put out discussing the charges that Do Kwan faces, and this is something that um, was interesting to me, because Do Kwan is claiming that he is not on the run, um, but is claiming that he has no plans to use his passport, because South uh, Korea was talking about banning his passport, um, but somehow he still is traveling. That's what I don't get out of this uh, this interview because Lorshin point blank asks him, you know, what do you what are your thoughts about your passport being um, ban banned, basically? And she said, and he says, uh, oh, you know, no big deal to me. I don't, you know, it's I I don't use my passport. And so 
from that, you would assume that he's not traveling. But then she asks him about travel, and he still says, oh, no, I just don't use my passport. So does he have another passport? Does he have alternate IDs? Does he, you know, what's he got going on on the back end? So that was a little fishy to me. Uh, another thing that was pretty fishy is that South Korea hasn't been able to deliver the charges against him and present him with those charges. So what they did was is they released a PDF online. Now, everybody has seen that PDF for the most part. If you were keeping an eye on the whole Terra Luna thing, the PDF's out there. Most people have seen it. But Do Kwan claims that he's never seen the PDF. Now, I don't deny that he hasn't maybe seen it, but this is obviously, in my eyes, a ploy to say that he's never seen it. He knows what's on that PDF. He knows it's out there. He just hasn't looked at it. Either he has looked at it himself and he's lying, or he had someone else read it for him and then explain what was on the PDF to him. That way he could deny ever seeing the PDF to make it seem like he was never presented with the charges so that he could plead um, basically that, oh, you know, they were never delivered to me. I had no idea. I think that's the kind of the, the hand he is playing here. Um, and it's pretty obvious because he's not turning himself in. He knows he's wanted by South Korea. Um, he claims the charges are unjust. Um, so I'm not really sure what the argument is there, what kind of case he's trying to present against Korea and what his plan is. That's really what I'm trying to figure out is where does Do Kwon go from here? Like what, what happens? Like does he just continue to live his life and then – these just always remain, and he just sits wherever he is, and that's it? Like, I don't I don't really know where things go from here, and that's where I'm trying to, like, put the pieces of the puzzle together because it sounds like Do Kwan is still running uh, businesses, right? Like, he's still doing stuff with the Terra Luna Foundation, um, and he says he's not doing anything with Luna Classic um, right now and has no plans to do anything with Luna Classic, but I'm not sure what else, like... I don't know. It's just it's just a weird thing to me that um, you know he's blown stuff up and he's continuing operations and almost pretending like nothing happened other than keeping his location and um, and stuff like that on on uh, secret. Like he's still just kind of just hanging out and continuing business operations and um, so yeah, I'm really not sure uh, where things go from here. Now it's it's really. Just to play devil's advocate a little bit here, I think that one point that Do Kwon made that I agree with, and he wasn't the first, other people have made this point, is that a project that fails, to me, is not the problem. To me, the problem isn't that Terra Luna failed, okay? Projects fail all the time. It's one of the risks of crypto, right? You should go into this knowing you are on the risky end of things, that this is risky, um, and that there's a good chance that a lot of them are going to fail, just like a business w can fail sometimes too, right? Like you don't go into the stock market and look at penny stocks and get mad when they fail. That's kind of what's going on here. So again, to me, the problem is not that Terra Luna failed. To me, the problem is the intransparency, the smoke that has been laid out by Do Kwan and his team. We don't really know what happened with all the money. There's a lot of questions still out there. And while Do Kwan claims that he lost tons of money with everybody else, yeah, well, he probably lost some money. He has still net profited largely from Terra Luna. It's, he didn't, like, it's not like he's, like, walking away bankrupt from this, okay? He bought a house for his parents. He's living pretty fine from what I understand. He's still running his businesses, no bankruptcy. To me, that is the problem. To me, there's money that was not given back to the holders that should have got, gone back to the holders. If his project is blowing up, he shouldn't be able to just continue on with other operations as if nothing happened um, and just say, sorry about your luck and then talk about how he lost more than anyone else because again in dollar figures while he might have lost you know more than other people his percentage of net worth generated from Terra Luna is I'm speculating here but I think it's a lot higher than when he started Terra Luna so what I'm saying is is that he has profited so much off of the whole Terra Luna deal 
that even though it went under, he still walked away net positive. And I think that is the problem. Again, I'm speculating because we don't have all the details, but from what I'm getting, again, he's buying property for his parents. He's continuing things. He's obviously living a fine life. Every time I see him, he's in a very nice place. So he's clearly not broke. And the fact that he is continuing on and again, has not declared bankruptcy. I know I'm repeating myself here, but to me, that is the issue. The issue that he hasn't been transparent on where the Bitcoin went that he was using to defend the peg. He has these like responses that make it sound intelligent and like he's explaining what actually happened, but I don't buy it. There's no evidence there. He's not presenting us with any documents that show the Bitcoin flow. Show us the trade logs. Where are the trade logs at the time of the crash for Terra Luna? Maybe they exist out there and I don't know. And if they do, definitely let me know down below in the comment section, guys. But I have not seen that. I have not seen the flows. What we do have is a lot of on-chain analysis that suggests that the Bitcoin was moved around in very inconspicuous ways and not actually used to defend the peg and that they were cashing out loads of Bitcoin for themselves. That is evidence that we have on chain that we can see ourselves. So to me, that's the only thing that we have at the moment. So why would I not believe what is on chain and take his word for it when I don't see any evidence of financial struggles with with Do Kwan? I don't at all. Now, just because he's not financially struggling, does that not mean that he didn't lose? No, but again, I to me, that's a huge red flag that we don't know everything that we should know, that he should be transparent about. He says he's being transparent, but I do not believe, I haven't seen anything factual that supports his point. And as a matter of fact, the only evidence I have seen has gone against his words. So, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. I think most people look at this and they say, look, dude, you keep saying that you guys weren't cashing out Bitcoin to yourselves and stuff, but here you are still running businesses, buying property, living a fine life, and we have no true evidence that says that you didn't do these things. And I, to me, that is the biggest problem. So again, I know we're, we're you know, I, I feel like sort of beating a dead horse with this whole Do Kwan thing and um, you know, bringing it back up again, and this has been like an everlasting art, like thing go that's been going on. But again, to me, the problem is, is he's not being transparent, and that he won't stop, basically arguing that he was the victim here, and that you know we should all just be nice to him, and just like that to me is what keeps resurfacing this discussion. Um, and I wanted to discuss it here with you guys now because, like I said, he was on uh, Unchained. And, guys, really check that episode out. I'll link it down below if you haven't already. That's the full interview. Um, it's a little longer, but, it, again, it's it's good. And it kind of gives you an unbiased idea of Do Kwan. Like, you know, what does he really think? And a lot of it you can tell is structured responses. Um, you know, he does a great job of telling you nothing while talking a lot. <laughs> so like he might say like a lot of stuff and like literally there's no substance in what he said. So, um, and a lot of that is, again, it's legal coaching. So let me know what you guys think about that interview. If you did watch it, if this is your first time to the channel, please like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>